Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. It's a lovely day but there's quite a bit of wind blowing so I do apologise for any wind noise you can hear. Now today we're going to first job pick these grapes that are ripe. We're going to leave the green ones on. There is a bit of a storm coming this week and I just because they're ripe they'll break off easy so I want to get them in and Diane can start and make me some wine. Now last week I made a mistake so I'll just I just put the mistake right. I actually called a cabbage a cauliflower and they're not very happy about it. I was picking these cabbages and I looked at the label and I read off what was on it and it was actually the cauliflower row. So apologies to everyone, apologies to the cabbage. The cabbage is called Sherwood. It's a summer cabbage, as you can see it's a lovely cabbage. And the cauliflower was Fairway, which is a good freezing one, which is actually in the freezer now. So having apologised to him, he seems quite happy now. He seems happier. Don't worry about the pen, it's not permanent, it's, it'll just wipe off. Okay, now we're going to pick the grapes that really are getting ripe. There's one or two beginning to wrinkle a little bit. And I've got my chickens here because they know the grapes are going to be on the floor. I'm using the grape secretary as you can see. They are dirty but that's from pruning, I can't really get that off. But that'll be fine. These is uh, they to get in a bit better for me. We'll get some off and we'll start filling these trugs for you. As you can see, they're well ready. They're a little bit small this year, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> There you go, beautiful grapes, they're all ready for wine making these will be, they are so sweet as well. <laughs> Lovely grapes, it doesn't seem we're going to get much colour on the leaves this year, I think that's, the weather keeps getting cold and getting warm, it doesn't know whether it's coming or going, and they're very nice. Look. I will We'll pick the rest and then we'll show you what we get off the first pick. Now we've collected most of the grapes, there's quite a few left. We'll leave these to either ripen or probably the thrushes will take them, but we'll leave these, they're, they're not ready so we'll have to leave them too. See we've picked quite a few. That's the grapes out of the way. I thought there'd be more room, but there's not quite as much. When I prune them, we'll prune them quite severe this year and try and lift them a little so they're out of the way a bit. But they're looking good, it's a very good vine. Having got the grapes sorted, we'll move on to how we store the geraniums for overwintering. I've got three geraniums in the barrow that we're going to show you. We've done quite a few as you can see, some are in some old plant, uh, buckets that I've cut in half, some, this is an old Dulux paint, what paint the house with, so I've just cut that in half, put holes in the bottom and they'll be fine. This is a planter, filled that with fuchsias, I'll show you how to do the fuchsias in a few moments, but all we do is we put that they are trailers, so we just put trailing. This is the compost we're going to use very very sandy there's a good a good half of the mix is sand horticultural sand don't forget don't use builders sand and grit there's a lot of grit in it as well to make it so it drains very easily any water that gets on it although we're not going to water it as you can see it's a little bit damp that's about as damp as we need it all through the winter 
if anything a bit drier than that that'd be fine so let's uh, let's begin with some geraniums it's best if you can let them dry out in the pots a little before you do this then it don't make them so sticky first thing I do is give them a little tap on the barrow not too hard and it just gets any any loose compost off I check round and I don't know if you can see but this has got a big rot on it there so this one I'm not going to store I'm going to reject that straight away because that will just get worse and then rot down and that will be it and it could rot another one that's what we have to be careful of so reject that one altogether this one it's a nice big plant plenty of root on it I'm looking around to see if there's any weevil on it and the best way to do that is to gently tap it on the barrow and then looking what falls off as well and uh, there's none there so what I do now I'm just going to get my stick and then I'm just going to go through brush it through to knock the compost away and just having a look to see if there's any weevil bugs in there or anything which is, doesn't look like there is any very careful with the top knock as much compost off as you can there you are little bit just here and then that will be fine there you are it's a good root Ooh, that's fine now we'll reduce the top I'm actually going to cut to just above a knuckle or a node where this one's got a little piece on it I should leave that on and cut there because this is rotten anyway so we'll take it off there likewise there I'll get on with it and show you it looks a bit brutal but it's not there's the node so we just cut there not like that again we don't want to store all this if you want cuttings late cuttings take them now because there's a lot of cuttings on these this one will go just above that one look there just turn it so you can see there is a little bit of new growth there so we'll keep that we'll go there not on that one this one there that one we'll go there this one there look just above that this one we'll take that one completely off and we'll leave that little bit of leaf there and now so I'll clean the leaves and show you see this little bit of dead here just take that off it looks like this rotten is rotten piece has gone into the stem and cut the whole stem off now I'll just go around and clean it we'll take the flowers off obviously we don't want those and the old stalks clean it back this leaf is not doing anything now look so we'll take that off there again bad leaf there that can come off that one off that one off flower off make sure you get the hole you can take these little leafy things off I've forgotten the name again I'll have to write that down take those off and just look at the general anything you don't like now's the time to take it off I don't like this one sticking out like that so we take that off looks a bit odd take it off there and I'm going to take that one off as well now we turn it over and I just trim the roots you don't want all this lot trim them off if you haven't got a good pair of secateurs use a good pair of scissors then just final check everything's fine yes and we can plant it what I do when I'm planting I make a good hole at the beginning push it to the side now this goes in like that 
make sure your roots are down and then push the compost tight. We're not going to water so if there's any voids in there they will dry the roots so really push it tight against them like that and then we'll start the next one to go there. I'll show you one more, it's pretty red this one. Look. Again just give it a gentle tap on the barrow, I find it easier. But careful that so you don't break the top while you're doing it. And then a good look. You'll see them, they're like white maggots, but if you see them, kill them straight away. Don't don't want those. Since we've been keeping our own plants through, we seem to be on top of the vine weevil now by doing this. Some good roots there, look. Now let's reduce the top. Quite drastic for this one. Again, first look at it and think, well, yeah, we just need to be round there. That's a good green shoot, look, so we'll take that off. That's got a damaged bit there, so we'll take the lot of that one, but there's a node there, so I'll go just above that. We'll go just above that node there, they will shoot in the spring. That one, we'll leave that one, take that one off definitely, take that away. This one going up centre, we'll take that off there, look. Reduce as much as you dare, that's the thing. I think we'll go there on that one, and there on that one. That's fine. Then we'll just go around and tidy it up. Take it as many leaves off as you think, just enough to survive. Look. That's fine. General, look, see there's a bit there, look. I'm not quite happy with that. Let's just take that off. It's not rotten any further down, look, so that'll be fine. The little shoot coming there, we'll leave that. Just a general look round. We'll take a little bit of the root off this one, not a lot. Just there, look, we'll just take that off, just to tidy things up. And there you are, there's a lovely geranium ready for overwintering. Same again, make a good hole. It gets difficult at this end when you're getting a bit tight. And then make sure they're down and then push them to the side so there's no voids. And as tight as you can to each other. This one you should get about 15 plants in. We've got some more to do so we'll pop those in as well. That's uh, two of the geraniums done. If you can imagine you sit and spend quite a bit of time doing this. I'll do a couple of fuchsias, two or three fuchsias into this pot to show you how we do the fuchsias as well. Okay. Now when you're taking them out of the hanging baskets and pots they come something like this. You can see where it's been in a hanging basket and I've took the basket apart and these are all the roots so we just pull these off. Get your hands in and really keep moving it about and the compost falls off. Okay, when it's loose-ish like that, that's when we'll give it a tap on the barrow. Okay, then just gently shake as much off as you can. So we're down to that now and it's still not far enough down so that's where we get the stick and start pulling the Pulling the compost and the old roots away. That's going to come off, look, so we'll just break it up a little bit. That's better. So we're looking for weevils, etc., that are in there. You can see where it's rooted right from up here, look. Some people use water to wash it off, but I think it's too much of a mess and if you wet the roots too much, they'll want to start growing again. It's better just keep them as dry as you can. Keep going, it'll be fine. 
Anyway, I don't think we can go much more on that one. It's a bit of a shake. That's fine. Now the top. This is one that we overwintered last year. That's the old overwintering stem. It's even rooting from it. And all this is all the new growth since we overwintered it last year. So now we're going to reduce it again. Again, it will look a bit drastic, but it's a, it's a nice fuchsia. Take these off at an angle if you can. Above a node still, like geraniums, in there. Look, we don't want all that. Above that node there. That one, not, we just, we don't want all that. We'll go in there, look. And in again there. And in again there. And then we'll reduce these down. So take these right back. Take that one, but that's crossing that one, look, anyway. So take that. That will shoot again from there. There's more than one bud on, on a joint. This, don't really like that, so I'll take that off. That's fine. Bit of dead there, look, we don't want that on. And there. Last general look at it. That's fine. If you're a bit concerned whether they're alive or dead or not when coming to spring i'll show you on one of the branches if you take imagine that's the branch on that in the spring if you think they're dead and you think oh i don't know if you just get your nail and scratch a little bit if you see a little bit of green like that you'll know that they're alive if it's brown inside you know that that branch is dead now then back to this one take that leaf off I don't want that. we're just going to trim those roots I'm going to trim them just there there you go there's no feed in this compost at all it's just uh, more or less sand sand and grit make sure those little roots at the side that are rooting from the top if you leave them exposed they'll just dry same again, push it tight, no water, so push it nice and tight, no, no voids. Then we'll do one more quick one there, and then we'll show you how to do one that's been grown in a pot that's quite big. This is one that's been in a pot or a hanging basket, I think, I don't know, probably a pot. We can see where it's been cut already. Just squiggle your fingers inside just to loose. Remember, look in, see if anything's dropping out that shouldn't. Uh, just clean it off and then give it a gentle tap. I thought that was a wine weevil then, but it's just a bit of stone. And then have a quick look. This big white root coming off there that will actually shoot upwards as well and make another stem. So I'll get the little stick. Look, there's not a lot on this one there. Look, just keep going through. Uh, there's nothing there to show you. Don't go too hard because you'll damage the stem. So just gently combing if you like. There's a little bit of grit still in there but that's coming out nicely then we just do the top it's been working hard this one look. so take that twiggy bit off this is broken we don't want that that's broken anyway not we take that off and that one that's not doing nothing we take that off so we'll start just above this node this time Likewise above that one and that one leaves one big stem. I'm going here, there's a good node there, so we'll go above that. And then reduce we take that off. That's fine. Trim the roots. That ought to come off, don't we don't want that on. Trim the roots. There you go. That fuchsia is nicely ready for overwintering. Remember if you get them warm and if you get them wet they will start growing again. So keep them cool. Not too much light. That's it. I put these in the shed and 
they're perfectly all right. There is a window in the shed and I'll put it next to the window. It'd be no good putting them in the greenhouse. It's far too much light and they'll burst back into growth. We just want them to sit and wait till spring. Can you see that broken bit on there? Look, I'm not happy with that. I'm going to take that off. See? And take it away. Now some of your fuchsias have been in big pots and they're quite big plants. So I've got a couple here that I'll show you how we do one of those, the big plants. This is quite a big plant. It's been in this pot for the summer. It's flowered beautifully. I've let it dry out as much as a dare. As you can see, it's, it, it's showing signs of going into winter anyway. So I'll show you what to do with a plant this size, how to reduce it down for over winter. And the first thing we've got to do is get down this pot. There it is. Take your take the crocs out the bottom. Be careful we don't cut you because some of these can be quite sharp. It's well rooted, it's made a good plant up. It's in some damn fine compost. It's grown very well, look. It's had a good root, it's had a good summer, a little bug on it there. No, a... Right now so what we'll do is start loosening the compost and letting it fall into the barrow. All this old compost and tops will all go back through the compost heap again. The woody bits, I just put the lot through the shredder, it saves a lot of time. Just keep manipulating it if you like until the compost dropping out. Also, looking at what's coming up important if you just left it in that big pot for the winter it would it wouldn't do any good it wouldn't grow it would probably rot off anyway so there we are look we've got it well down now keep going move to shape and then we'll just tap it a little bit careful with the plant now Quite a pretty fuchsia. And the stick again, just keep working it. I'll do it a bit quicker this time. And then in the spring when it's waking up and it gets all new compost around the roots, it'll soon grow away again. Just comb it down a bit. Far too much here now. Take some of this off. Always looking, remember. I don't think we're going to beat that much. No. Now there is a limit that you get to. If you take too much off them, you will kill them. So leave a little bit. That's about as far as I dare go with this now. That's good. We'll reduce the top. You can see there's some new shoots already coming at the bottom. We want to just slow those down by reducing everything. There's lots of twiggy bits that we need to take off that are not doing any good. This is one that we overwintered last year. There's the overwintering stem there. And this is all new growth that's come away from it. So we'll do the same again, follow it up and then find a node and then just cut cut off as low as that look there. This one's not doing any good so that that can come off completely tidily. That one will take off just there. Look. This one a little bit longer look we'll go there I think. And there, take that off as well, and that leaf. This can come off here, this can come off here. This one, there, mm -hmm. and that one just there, you see. If you look round here, we've got a little shoot there, so we'll take that out. We're getting there now. We'll just clean it up a little by hand. The leaves that are yellow are finished, so it's no good leaving them on. 
that's fine last look at the root ball everything looks okay these are new shoots coming up already look we don't really want those this time of year so we'll slow it all down cutting the root will stop it from shooting away too early again not quite so fierce as the smaller ones obviously but through there look now if you wish you could put this into like a little one litre pot but I'm going to pop it for now into this one that's got the geraniums in or the pelagoniums I'm supposed to call them there. So that's a nice fuchsia in there again make sure it's really tight against the edge I got plenty more compost just to top up and then in the shed it won't be watered if you think they want watering don't this wants to be like dust before you water uh, watering wise I might just miss them I won't water I would never water them through the winter I might just miss them if the tops look a bit dry too much on there just a little bit of mist in tepid water or water the same temperature as the plants and that's all they get maybe twice between now and spring and they'll sit there nicely we'll show you them in the shed when we've got them all done uh, that's the fuchsias and the pelagoniums stroke geraniums done for winter now I don't know if you could remember but we took some hardwood cuttings last year about this time of year and we just put them in the garden and now it's time to lift them and pop one or two up with you just show you what we do I'll have the ground prepared and ready for taking this year's hardwood cuttings which will be some of this vine to see if we can move the vine through the winter as well last year I don't know if you can remember we took some hardwood cuttings mainly fruit but now we need to dig them up and pop them I don't really have a use for them so what I'm going to do I'm going to pop them up and then in the spring when they're nicely growing I'm going to send them up to the fate the village fate that raises funds for the village hall so it'll be my little donation for those but it'll be fruit trees this year right these are the few of them that's rooted one or two failed but we've got one or two so we'll dig these up and get them potted this one's failed look here that's fine and there's two here that have failed another one I don't think that's actually failed I think that's just lost its leaves still remember how we do it we just scratch and that's showing green try and read the label that's a photinia red robin which is still alive but we'll pop that one up later I think that one's been trod on so that's dead there's a couple of looks like orchibas that have rooted so we'll wait for spring a variegated Portuguese laurel that's rooted a fuchsia, hardy fuchsia that's rooted itself up that's good that one, we don't know what that is what is it? Prunus ligustrum, it's a green prunus that might be rooted, we'll have to leave that one and see I'll just dig one or two and pop them up to show you what's gone they are actually these are go red gooseberries so we'll dig one or two and see what we've got I've done nothing to them I said when I've been watering I've squirted some water at them that's about all of them all year let's see what we've got it's heavy I say it hasn't been moved so it's quite a weight in the I'm going to have to do it with a fork, I thought I'd be able to lift it by hand. That's it, let's have a look. Very heavy soil. That's rooted well, look. I'm breaking roots off as I'm doing it, the ground's that hard. 
We've got a worm there, look, and put that back in. There you go. There you are, that's rooted well. Right into the clay bed at the bottom, look, that one. Have a job putting that one in the pot. Again, we'll pot three up and see how we go, and then we'll do three currants. I've got some compost here. I've put a bit of, of hoof and horn in this just to give them something to bite on later in the year so when they really get going then we'll put them in just press them down a bit a little bit of root show in there look make sure they're all covered I'll label them right, I'll only do the red gooseberries, there are some green goose, uh, gooseberries. When we used to grow gooseberries years ago, we used to give it a four inch leg, if you like, or foot, and then grow the gooseberries away. In case anybody wants to do that, this little buddy is it, I'll just nip that off. Then if they want to grow it, the old fashioned way they can do. Nowadays they seem to come out all over. I just pop these three up and then we'll do a current. I have got the name of them over there. I will put the proper name on them. I'll just tread this back down again because they've been disturbed. But we don't want to, them to dry out. They're good plants. Oh, it is hard. It is hard, got some nice worms, look. you go back in the sun, I don't want to go. Just break this a little bit. They are well rooted, look, look at that, the roots on there. We'll have a job to get that, or oh, I might just get it in the top. These are black currants. I'll just pop these two up and show you. It is well, well rooted, it's rooted right down into the clay bed at the bottom. Uh, I just popped this last one up, then we'll show you what we've done. A little bit of compost in the bottom. Not too much, look, because it's rooted that high up. That'll be fine. Nice and firm, remember, currents. There you are, that'll do that one nicely. I'll just show you what we've got now. So we've got three red gooseberries this one i've actually cut that one off there i haven't got my secretaries with me now i shall cut that one off there and balance the plant a little that's fine that can carry on that's fine perhaps just cut that little bit of root off and not very pleased i'll take it off in a minute that's it but we've got it off now i shall water them and grow them through the winter in out the wind be outdoors, but be out the wind. I think this year we'll go for hardwood shrubs and of course we'll try the grapevine in there as well. If you're wondering what the sheet is hanging across, I had to put because I let the chickens into this area now, I've had to put the sheet across to keep the chickens from eating the young cabbage plants that are just behind the Brussels plants. It's bad enough keeping dying off the brussels, but now I've got to keep the chickens off the cabbages as well. So that's just there temporary. All the waste compost we've been getting out of the hanging baskets and the pots as we've been storing the plants for winter, I've been putting them down here. As you can see, the chickens have sorted it out nearly for me. There's a few old strawberry plants there we need to take out. We'll have to call it a day for now because Murray started mowing his lawn, okay? Hello everyone, Friday today. It's a bit overcast today, but it's a lovely warm wind it's coming from the south. It's very nice. The only trouble is the plants think it's spring again and they'll start shooting. The hardwood cuttings that we lifted yesterday, I've potted, I'll show you them in a moment. And I've just finished digging the bed over. Now I've put the waste compost on the bed as well. Now where we're going to do the hardwood cuttings will be in the same place. 
Now with me just digging it and the ground being a little bit on the dry side, we'll have to give it a week or two to settle. But looking at the shrubs, etc., that I want to take cuttings off, they're, they're not even dropping the leaves yet. So I need a little bit of time to get these plants dormant before we take the hardwood cuttings. But Diane will show you now what I've dug today. This is what I've done today. I've dug round the Celeria, and that was the only one survived off the early batch. The rest of them, they got a bit of frost on them and they ran straight to seed. Now the, I've dug it so just the top spit, I haven't gone deep on this. This is where we'll build the new strawberry bed. I'll start that over the next week or so and then we'll get the plants and put those in. That's an ongoing job for, as we run out of work to do. But there is plenty of work still to do. Now we'll pop up to where the compost bins are and I'll show you the plants that are potted from the overwintered hardwood cuttings. These are the hardwood cuttings that were taken straight into the garden. We've got 37 in the end, mainly fruit, currants, gooseberries, red currants, black currants obviously. Uh, there's a couple of fuchsias and there's a Portuguese laurel variegated, I took that off that big tree up there. They all seem fine, they're all well rooted. I've had to put them up here because if I put them on the floor the chickens will get them. So I'm keeping them up here until I find somewhere down the garden to pop them. So let them overwinter, grow up again in the spring and then these will go up to the garden paint for the village hall. I'll have to obviously label them up properly by then so that'll be fine. Now Friday today as I said and we're going to have to end it there else the video will be too long. There is a male pheasant somewhere down the garden crowing. I don't know if you can hear him making his alarm noise. So that'll be about it for this week. Many many thanks for people who are subscribing. We do appreciate it and hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.